Hi guys, just a very quick video. Just wanted to show you where we're cut out with the pie top. Um, so this is this is it. It's a um, it's about 13 inch uh, laptop. It's um, it's got Raspberry Pi based, um, and from the outside, it really just looks like any other any other laptop device. Really, um, I've made a couple of little modifications, uh, which I'll show you. So on over here we have the uh, mains uh, input, uh, so to charge the battery, uh, and I've just um, drilled a little hole and put an SMA uh, for the uh, the SMA connector uh, going to the uh, the RSP one A that's inside. Um, it's a shame that the sides are uh, sloped because it kind of means that everything you put in sort of points downwards, um, which is a problem really when you're connecting up cables. But uh, you know this is just a prototype, so um, I thought it was good enough for the first first iteration. Uh, and on, on on this side of the uh, of the device, there is a hole cut away anyway. Uh, that that um, uh, so you can see the Raspberry Pi is inside there. Two of the USB ports are already used, um, but you get two that you can sort of uh, you know connect up to uh, to whatever. Um, but this this hole was already there, uh, and I've just added a. I've drilled a hole and I've added a, a rotary encoder uh, knob just on the side here. Um, the idea being that we can just use this to uh, adjust uh, frequency, you know, just to kind of see how that works. Again, because it's kind of sloped, it's a bit of shame. It makes, uh, if you can see that, it's sort of the the knob points downwards. So um, on certain uh, surfaces, you know, that, that that's going to kind of encroach. So um, maybe a slightly different knob or... Uh, maybe there's a better place to put it, but it, again, it's just a kind of a. It was just for, just for prototype uh, purposes. Um, so let's open it up and see what we got. So it's uh, like I say, it's kind of a standard laptop screen. Getting a bit of a glare there, so you can't, you can't see it very well. Um, it's uh, keyboard, um, standard UK keyboard. Uh, over here, we've got the mouse uh, buttons and uh, like a like a pad trackpad. Um, and then there's this kind of um, sort of acrylic uh, cover here, which if we uh, if we slide back is where all the kind of good stuff is. So let's uh, take this back out of here. This is kind of nice. Uh, this kind of reveals everything that's kind of. So hopefully I'll I'll be able to kind of show you what's going on here. So um, over on the left hand side here we have the uh, this is where the so the mains comes in here. And this is the circuitry that deals with um, getting the uh, video from the Raspberry Pi to the to the to the screen. Unfortunately, there's a bug with this piece of hardware. Um, this version of the hardware that I have is that the um, the monitor, uh, sort of the screen connector, I have to keep reconnecting every time I power this device on. It's a it, it's a known a known issue, and I, I need a I need an updated version of this board to fix that. Um, I mean, it, apart from that, it works. It, it works very well. Um, so it's got a couple of connections here. It takes the outputs from the uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, USB, and um, and uh, HDMI, um, and also it has the circuitry to charge the battery, which is kind of underneath a kind of a metal plate that runs the sort of width of the of the laptop uh, underneath the keyboard. Um, uh, you can see the cable coming in, the SMA cable coming in that I've got going to the uh, to the RSP one A, which is uh, the board in the obviously the board in the middle here, um, and um, just in squeezed in between those is uh, is a speaker, um, and that's um, that's part of the uh, that comes part of the kind of the key. I think it's an a, a, it's a cost adder, um, but um, it's actually been been very useful. Otherwise, you've uh, whenever you use it, you've got to have a um, headphones connected or an external sort of speaker setup but just kind of a portability it's kind of it's kind of nice to have that speaker uh, already in there what happens is basically underneath all this stuff is like a is like a bus that runs along here um, and um, you can uh, you can connect it's a modular system and you can connect the Raspberry Pi and different add-ons into this kind of uh, system uh, and in the middle here, underneath the the Raspberry One A, uh, is like a GPIO header board. Um, you can actually see the the pins coming up out the back there. I'm just using it to rest the RSP One A on, uh, but I'm actually using the header pins 
um, that come out of here, this this whole system connects through to the speaker, and it ultimately comes back up through to the GPIO connector here, back to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and these these cables that I've um, that I've got going up to the GPIO, they run off to the uh, to the rotary encoder over here. Um, so that's how we're going to kind of use the uh, do the um, the frequency control. Um, uh, and then obviously uh, just to the to the right of the 1A um, there's the Raspberry Pi 3B it's got a memory card inside there I think I've got 16 gigs in here at the moment um, and then it's just a standard a standard uh, RSP sorry a standard Raspberry Pi 3B plus um, and you can see the uh, USB connections here one of them goes off to the RSP 1A and then the other one goes off to the board that's um, that's over there, and then HDMI connection underneath uh, at, the, at, the, at the bottom here, uh, and then power coming in, which comes from the from the kind of circuitry and the battery over there. So, um, and then you obviously you can see the in this where I've just sort of got the rotary encoder sort of wedged in down here. It's probably I mean, me mechanically it's it, it's kind of okay, but really really it kind of needs you know. Longer term, this kind of needs a bit more work and and so on. But you know, kind of this is kind of prototype stuff. Um, so let's uh, let's just show you the software and just a very quick demonstration of what I've got loaded on here. So uh, I'll go ahead and connect up a. Uh, I've just got a very simple sort of uh, two meter antenna, so we can do some broadcast uh, checks. Um, just uh, connect up the. That's up the SMA cable there, and you can see that because of the angle of this slope, you can see that the cable is already pointing downwards, which is whoops, can't kind of get the angle, right, which is kind of going to be a problem for working on surface you know, desks and things. Um, and I'll also connect in the uh, uh, the mains cable just to kind of show you that how that kind of goes in, um, and then. Uh, literally that's it so then we just uh, power on the device here hold it down you can see you've got the LEDs uh, then if you can see that that the LEDs have come on for the Raspberry Pi um, now in theory this should be this should be running but we've got this bug where the screen is black so I'm gonna need to kind of do my uh, wave a bit of magic with the connector cable and hope it doesn't break because it's very uh, it's very thin uh, and there we go. So you just unconnect the cable, reconnect it, and now we've got the sort of Raspberry Pi screen. I'll try and kind of show this in a bit better. Um, this is really just a very quick kind of, you know, this is where we're at sort of thing. So, you know, uh, quality is not uh, not not the um, not the aim here. So I've got the trackpad, and I can um, use my yeah, I can use my hands on the trackpad and move the move the cursor around. Um, I've got a couple of things on here. So we've got Cubic SDR and the DAB software. So I'll kind of just quickly run both. Um, I've also turned on the uh, the, hard, the, the graphics uh, acceleration, which you'll see has made a massive difference to Cubic SDR's performance specifically. So let's start Cubic SDR. And what you'll hopefully see is that it starts up in instantly. And before, uh, when we're doing this on the demos, I'm going to try and see if I can get this doing on other demos that we do. But before, it would probably take a good 30 seconds, almost to a minute, before Cubic SDR was in a position where it could actually be used. Um, but now that we've got the hardware graphics acceleration working, um, that works quite nicely. So I'm going to select the device, uh, and I can leave it at 2 megs because it runs quite happily. Um, and I don't know what frequency we're at, but we'll have a, we'll have a go at this. Just click Start. Uh, and there we are. We've got a signal in the middle of the screen. Um, I think this is, should be uh, Radio 2. And then I'll just click here and hopefully we'll hear it. Um, I think uh, I think I need to turn the volume down because it's probably going to be quite loud. Let's just see. Uh, and click on there. Oh, and that's it. It's quite soft. It's quite soft. So, oh. you do get, kind of get these odd kind of graphical blackouts, which is. I don't, I don't know if you can hear that, uh, but uh, you'll have to take my word for it. If you can't, that is uh, that's Radio Two in the UK, um, and that's running Qubit just as we've 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 run it before. Um, that's all running quite nicely. Now for the for the um, 
for the kind of frequency adjustment, the idea was that we kind of, um, uh, unfortunately, you kind of get these help bars appearing every time you move your cursor anywhere in Cubic. I probably have to try and turn that off. But as I'm as I'm turning the uh, the rotary encoder on the side here, um, the f the idea is that this frequency changes. Now I've had hit and miss results with this. Uh, I need to kind of understand. Um, probably let's see if the software may not be running. And let me just see if I've got the software running quickly. Um, Okay, and then go into there, and then this is probably why this isn't. Um, uh, no, forgot what I called the thing. What well, rotary key? So let's run this, and this will. I should be able to kind of just uh, get this running should have run automatically but it doesn't seem to um ah good old linux doesn't know where you're looking for stuff okay so now that in theory is working let's go back over to cubic uh, put my cursor down in the bottom and in theory this should be ah okay well you can see the you can see the frequency is changing unfortunately it's kind of um cubic so you can i don't know if you can see that but the there is some, it's kind of hit and miss, it kind of works and then it doesn't work and it works again. Um, so, needs a bit of work there, but in, in, in theory, this is, um, you can see I'm sort of going, I'm going up and down in one megahertz steps by the looks of this. But Cubic isn't following where I'm tuning to. So, um, unlike in SDR Uno, where, where we have the rotary encoders that we support. Um, it follows the frequency. Cubic doesn't seem to be doing that for some reason, but um, I guess the principle I wanted to show here is that we have the rotary encoder communicating with the software. There's some fine tuning to do to figure out how to kind of keep that that frequency central. Um, but let me just shut down Cubic, uh, and I'll just quickly show um, on the on the menu here. You probably can't see that because of the, the glare, but I've got Qt Dab running uh, on here as well. Um, and let's just see what we can find on here. Now I don't have a great dab signal at all here, um, so I'll do a scan scan of the band. Um, it claims that there are there are some stations there. Let's see. This is probably going to be very loud. Um, we'll see. Oh, it's still scanning apparently. Um, so let's see if I can actually speed this up by. Oh, here we go. Radio one. Okay, so that's playing. I don't know if you can hear that, uh, but it, it's playing. Um, it's got all the channels shown there. I don't know if I can get that better on the camera. Uh, probably the glare is going to be uh, going to defeat me here. But this is the standard QT application that we have um, running before. Now, what I have found, with also interestingly, um, is that if I touch the the if I touch the connection sometimes on like the um, the shielding on the side of here this can sometimes improve the signal I think I'd need to uh, add a I've got to do something here I'm not sure I need to have a little play with that but sometimes when I sort of ground this um, I get a better signal only only I've noticed that on dab so I don't know I don't quite know what's happening there anyway um, guys, just wanted to show you where we are. Very quick video. It was supposed to be a very quick video. Run, run to 15 minutes. So um, I'll stop there. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at. I'll stop that. And um, comments, please. Catch you later.